In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an animation like this. This is a multi-mate, multi-axis simultaneous animation, which is a great way to show how things work when things move in steps or sequences. Now, if we zoom out, we'll see there is a collection of surfaces and markers following those surfaces, which define using gear relations how the assembly moves. Now, I can't take credit for the method. This was John McClary's idea, but the custom feature automates the process. So let's go through how this animation was built so you can see all the steps required to make this animation. So we'll start by deleting all this. And in the assembly, you'll see there are all the mates which control Cobot, including the gripper attached to the end effector. And in here, we've got a number of what I'm calling helpers. So there is a track, which is just a sketch line, and that is grouped to the base of the Cobot just so that it doesn't move. And then hidden here is another block. So if I just move this out of the way, you'll see there is another block here. So this block is using this slider here to move along that track. So that's going to give me the horizontal movement. And then this being the actual block is attached to this one as a cylindrical, so it can go up, down, and rotate. And we can see there is also a slider between the gripper and this block, so as it rotates, the gripper rotates as well. So there's a number of helper items in there to make the process a lot easier. Okay, so we'll switch over to the part studio, where the features are defined, and we'll delete them and start from scratch. It's recommended you do these in their own part studio, but when you create the first animate feature, it's going to ask you for the duration. You can edit it afterwards if you need to make the duration longer or shorter, but this defines the entire timeline. And what you'll see is that that creates a surface, which is actually a composite part containing that surface plus these markers, and also there are numbers on there so you can count up and there's also a surface there called marker, and this is going to drive the animation. So at the moment it's doing nothing, so let's add a new animate in there, and we want to define whether we are going to animate a slider mate or a revolute mate in the assembly. And most of them are going to be slider mates, so we'll start with that. And the first step is going to be to move the block from left to right. And as you'll see now it's created another surface, in which case it's flat because it's set to zero start and zero end value, and a new surface there, it's called mate one. You can of course rename these to make them easier to follow, but I'll just leave the default naming for now. Okay, so in this, I want the block to start stationary, then move, and then stop again. So we'll start off with a value of three seconds. Okay, so it's still set to zero, so which is why you don't see any difference. And then we'll add a new step. So that's the pause. This is the motion. And for motion, we can use absolute. And we'll give the end value a 600 millimeters. Now what you'll see there, and if I go to the front view, it makes it a little bit easy to see, is that we've paused for three seconds, then we've moved for three seconds, and then it stayed in the final position to the end of the animation. The ease in and ease out figures, you'll see it creates an arc. It's ease in, ease out. You can also change the duration type. So you can see absolute is time in seconds. You can use a percentage of the entire timeline. So for this, perhaps we could have used you know, 33%. And these easing now is 10% of this step, not 10% of the entire timeline, 10% of this step. So again, if we, if we increase that, again, you'll see those values changing. But for something like a robot where you probably know the velocity and acceleration, then it makes more sense to use velocity because that then will define based on the velocity, how long that step takes to get to its final position. So you don't need to work that out. The velocity will do it for you. The only thing is that the units are only in meters per second for velocity and meters per second squared for acceleration. If you're using other units, I'm afraid you're out of luck. Uh, I just use meters for this. If you're using inches, in your part studio, then these values will be honored in inches, but these are only in meters. So we won't go too fast. Let's just go 
0.2 meters per second, and the acceleration here is say uh, half a meter per second squared. Okay, so you get a nice rounded motion in here. Okay, let's see how this works in the assembly. So we've got the timeline composite part, the marker, and the mate surface as well. So let's go to the assembly and we'll insert. You need to turn on composite parts and surfaces and probably turn off parts makes it easier to find what you're looking for. And we're going to take the timeline itself, the marker and that first mate. Okay, and you see obviously it's going to drag and just position it somewhere out of the way. Now just to start, we'll fix the timeline so it's not moving while you are developing the animation. But we also now need to associate these two surfaces, this one here and this one here, to these timelines. Now this marker basically drives everything else. So what we'll do is add a slider mate just to the front corner of that surface to that back edge of that very first surface on there. So that means that can now slide like this. We want this one to move along with this one. So again, we're going to use a slider. We'll use the top of that front edge on the marker and the top of the back edge on the mate. So now you'll see that that moves along with it, but it can also slide up and down. And then last thing we want to do is add a tangent mate between that point and that surface. Okay, so it means that now when you drag the marker along, you'll see that will slide up and follow that surface. Okay, I think you're getting the idea now. All right, so all we need to do now is associate that motion to the position of this block using a gear relation. Now, the ones we're going to use are linear or rack and pinion. So this is a straight linear relation between the slider two mate and the slider six mate, which is that hidden dummy block, which runs along the track. And it's a straight one-to-one -one relation. So now you'll find when you drag the marker along, nothing happens until it reaches that. And now this is starting to accelerate and then go at a fixed velocity until it reaches its destination, slows down and stops. Okay, so a very simple animation. The position of the other block, the gripper, and all the segments of the robot arm are just taken care of by on shape. It's just those standard mates just doing their thing in order to be able to solve the position of that block. It's had to move the other mates to suit, but it does produce a very realistic looking animation. Okay, so let's add some more things in for this block because we need this block to move up and down. And we're also going to get it to rotate as well. And again, you can see the gripper is moving and rotating relative to this block. And at this point, we're going to hide the track and the dummy block because all that was defining was the linear motion from left to right. Go back to the timeline, add a new feature. It's going to be another slider. And we'll start off doing nothing for two seconds. Then we'll add again. Uh, a velocity, and I do have all these values written down, but we're going to go keep that 0.2 meters per second for an acceleration of one meter per second, and we're going to go up to 180. So this is the block moving up at that speed. Then we're going to keep it there for a duration of 3.65 seconds, keep it at 180. The easing and ease out don't have an effect here, and then we're going to come back down with a velocity of 0.2 back down to zero. Okay, so we're getting a nice symmetrical timeline as you can see on the graph. So that is the up and down motion. Then we want to add the rotating motion. Now, because it's a rotating motion, we're gonna go for a revolute. And again, we want to do nothing for four seconds. And we'll go to 90 degrees over period of two seconds. Now, if you set the ease in and the ease out there to one, you're getting a nice curve. Well, you'll notice with Revolute in an absolute, you also have another profile from linear to sinusoidal. And what that gives you is a, basically a spline that you can define the strength of. And that's more required for like harmonic type motions. And in the example in this document of the Geneva wheel, that is where you would use this to get the exact motion of the rotating part. But we're going to keep that as linear for this. We'll get a nice motion there. Okay, let's just add those back into the assembly. 
Go to the insert dialog. Now we only need to turn on surfaces now. And we're going to add in mates two and three and just drag them roughly over there somewhere. And the best way to do this, if you add in multiple mates at the same time, is to separate them and add the slider mate. And if you pick on this front edge down here where you can see it, hold down shift, then you can pick the top edge and then you know you've got the correct edge from there. And we're going to pick the top edge from here. Shift to return to repeat, hold shift, click the top edge, click the top edge there, lines them all up. Then we're just going to go tangent between there and there, shift return, tangent between there, there, return. Okay, so now, you know, we're getting the same sort of motion, this thing, you see the thing sliding up there. Scroll back out here, and the first relation is going to be the height of the block. So we're going to relate slider four to the cylindrical mate. You see it automatically gets the Z axis of the cylindrical mate. And we'll see how that works. Again, you can just pick up the marker and drag it. You can see that's now it's coming up and then moving. And then finally, we'll add the revolute, which has to be then a rack and pinion relation. And we're going to relate slider five to the cylindrical but this time we want to make sure it is the rotation part of the cylindrical mate that is being defined. And because it's a rotation, you need to convert the linear to a rotary angle. So it's always going to be 360. So that a 90 millimeter move in the timeline equates to a 90 degree rotation in the mate. So now and we'll just run the animation. So we're going to animate slider one. The distance is going to be the length of this line here which is 100 millimeters per second. So that's going to be one meter. And then we could just see where we are so far. Okay, so the block comes up, it rotates, it goes down. And because one reciprocates, it's gonna get picked up again, rotates back again and gets put down. So all we need to do now is just define the motion of the gripper and the animation will be complete. So let's go back to here and add these in. These are a little bit more involved. So we'll start off with a new animate feature. Again, it's going to be a slider. So we're going to do nothing for 0.5 of a second. But where's the start value? Well, the gripper starts high up. So we're actually going to start at 120 and we're going to stay at 120 for the duration of this step. So you can see we've now got this line across here. Next step, we're going to use velocity again. We'll stick with a 0.2 value, but we'll increase the acceleration and we're going to go back down to zero. Okay, so this is the gripper approaching the block. Now, because the mate of the gripper is related to the actual block itself, then what we're actually doing is reducing the distance between the two, which brings the gripper down. Then we want to keep it down for seven and a half seconds, and then bring it back up again with a velocity. Takes the previous values, I'm going to go back up to 120. Okay, and there is my nice symmetrical graph created in there. Finally, we'll add the finger motion of the grippers. This one is again a little bit more involved, but we're going to do nothing for 0.5 of a second. At a step, we're going to use velocity, a little bit faster this time, so 0.3 and uh, say five meters a second acceleration. But we're actually gonna to go to minus 75. It's actually gonna bring the graph down below zero. And the reason for that is that the mates in the gripper are defined that way. If you wanted to make sure it was always a positive value, you know, you could redefine the mate connectors and so on. So it gives you a positive value, but it really doesn't matter. So we're going to stick with a minus 75. So that's opening the grippers wide enough. We want to keep them there for three quarters of a second. Then we want to close them with a velocity. It's taking the previous value. So this time we're going to go to minus 60. Okay, so it's closing it there. They want to keep it there because it's gripping the block and we'll keep it there for 6.55 seconds. Again, I told you I've written this down and then we're going to go back up with a velocity of 0.3 to minus 75. So we're opening the gripper. We're going to keep it there for 0.75 of a second. And then we want to close it completely. So we're going to go to velocity again and we're going to close it back down to zero. Okay, looking good. Let's go back to the assembly. 
We need to insert those two new markers again, because this is a composite part it, it brought through these entities, but we do need to insert the actual mates themselves. So it's mates four and five over here, following the same process. Of course, I could have just done this in one hit, but really when you're developing an animation, you'll do it in steps. So again, we're going to do a slider mate, pick where you can see of this front edge, hold down shift, click, click on there, shift return, hold down shift. Up to there. Okay, and then tangent mate between that and that. Shift return and between that and that. Okay, so now we're getting a more complex timeline. So again, we'll relate slider seven to slider three. You can see there actually we've, we've got it the wrong way around. So let's edit that and we'll just reverse that direction. Okay. And now we've got the correct motion. And finally, we'll do linear between slider eight and the mate for the fingers is in the sub assembly. So we're just going to go in here and find that slider mate. And that's it. So now we can go back to slider one, which is the very first marker and animate that over the length of the animation. In the example of the Geneva wheel, we'll see that we have to animate the slider. It's not possible to animate the revolute of the wheel. Fortunately, you do have to animate the slider. So in order to get this to move or rotate four times, basically I had to repeat the steps. And again, I'm using that sinusoidal shape. And then if I animate this, and again, we're gonna go for, well, it's eight seconds, so that's 800 and run. And you get a very natural looking motion. That's it.